Did you know that before I succeeded, I was fired for lack of creativity? Hello, I'm Walt Disney, the man behind the world's most famous mouse. I conquered the world with my empire of dreams and imagination. But I also experienced the bitter tragedy of losing my mother in a domestic accident. Don't forget to subscribe and give a like to the video to learn more about my story. I was born on December 5, 1901, in a small town called Hermosa, in Chicago. I was the fourth of five children in a modest family. My father, Elias, was a strict but hard-working man, and my mother, Flora, a kind and loving woman. As a child, I loved to draw and I used to sell my small works to the neighbors. In 1911, we moved to a farm in Marsling, Missouri, where I spent some of the happiest years of my childhood. It was there that I developed my love for nature and animals, which would later be reflected in my creations. During my adolescence, I worked as a newspaper vendor to help support the family. Although times were tough, I never stopped dreaming. My love life began with a woman named Lillian Bounds, who worked in my studio. I fell in love with her almost immediately, and we got married in 1925. She was a great influence in my life, and together we had two daughters, Diane Murray and Sharon May. It was Lillian who suggested changing the name of my character from Mortimer Mouse to Mickey Mouse. And she was right. Perhaps one of my most notable achievements was the creation of Mickey Mouse in 1928. The inspiration came from a domesticated mouse I had while working in Kansas City. Mickey soon became a recognizable icon around the world and forever changed the face of animation. Later, I took a risk to embark on a completely new and terrifying project. A full-length animated feature film, something that had never been done before. Despite criticism, in 1937, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs was a great success, ushering in the era of animated feature films. But I didn't stop there. In 1955, I opened the doors to Disneyland, the first theme park of its kind. It was a huge challenge to make it happen, but seeing the faces of children, full of wonder and joy, made every sacrifice worthwhile. And here's a curious fact. The first drawing of Mickey Mouse was made on a napkin during a train trip. And it occurred to me after losing the rights to my first animated character, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. There is no doubt that even disappointments can open the door to wonderful opportunities. My journey came to an end on December 15, 1966, when I died from lung cancer in Burbank, California. I was a heavy smoker all my life, a decision that unfortunately had its consequences. In the years prior to my death, I was heavily involved in planning a project I called the City of the Future, Epcot, Experimental Prototype Community of Tomorrow, a utopian urban environment designed to house 20,000 residents who would live and work in a high-tech and constantly innovative environment. Unfortunately, I never saw that dream come true. Despite my departure, I left a lasting legacy. I created a world full of imagination, joy, and dreams and I revolutionized the animation industry. People of all ages have grown up watching Disney creations, and I take great pride in knowing that my characters and my stories have touched so many lives and have inspired so many to dream. Here's a curious fact. Despite the rumors, I was not cryogenically frozen after my death. That's simply an urban myth. In reality, I was cremated and my ashes are located in Forest Lawn Memorial Park Cemetery in Glendale, California. My life was not without failures and challenges, but each of them taught me something and pushed me forward. As I once said, all your dreams can come true if you have the courage to pursue them. I hope that my life and my work inspire others to do the same. Thank you for being here. Don't forget to subscribe and keep exploring more stories of people who have left an indelible mark on our world.